Everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So bipartisanship, I decided, is going to be the death of mankind because the Biden administration and bipartisan groups in Congress are about to hand $25 billion in subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. And if you think I'm being dramatic or hyperbolic about all of this, you haven't seen the latest reports from scientists around the globe. I've had this feeling of impending doom for probably a couple months now, guys, based on reports that I have been reading, based on new data coming out from around the world and just here in the United States. But there's new reports which confirm what I've been fearing, what this feeling of dread that I've had. And I'm not happy to say I was right at all. So last week is the first piece of news that came out. Last week, scientists warned that a vital ocean system is on the verge of collapse. It's the AMOC. And that is the, it's a, an ocean system in the Atlantic Ocean. So on the East Coast of the United States. And what it does is it sends warm salt water to Northern Europe. And then in turn, we get back towards the United States, towards the tropical area, cool water along the ocean's floor. And this allows a stabilization of, of our climate in part, not in total, but it's a huge part of it. Well, scientists are sounding the alarm, and this is based on the data that they've gathered over the course of the last century. They say that a collapse of this crucial system would bring about enormous temperature fluctuations, and we would see extreme cold weather, not only in Europe, but also in parts of North America. And they say that it would also disrupt the seasonal monsoons, seasons that we're used to seeing. And then we would also see rising sea levels on the East Coast more even than what we've already been experiencing. So scientists said that the results would be far reaching. This is, like I said, a crucial, crucial system of our ocean. And they say that if there isn't enough cool water, which sinks lower in the ocean, helping to keep this system moving, we could see a catastrophe like the one seen at the end of the last ice age. The experts say that this could last, just like the last one, 1,000 years. What's more is that they say that this system on the East Coast is either on or it's off. There's no in between. And they say that if it shuts off, we can't switch it back on. It would literally be impossible while humans still exist on Earth. Let me reiterate that. We would all have to die for this system to have a chance of resuming normal function for the Earth to survive. And one of the scientists interviewed said, quote, it's one of those events that should not happen, and we should try all that we can to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as quickly as possible. This is a system we don't want to mess with. Now, what's beyond disturbing is that another report came out today. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released their global warming findings. And the UN Secretary General said this is, quote, a code red for humanity. He also said that, quote, there is no time for delay and no room for excuses. Now, this new report was authored by 234 experts and basically was a meta-analysis of tons of data. They gathered data from over 14,000 international studies. So this isn't just United States scientists saying that this isn't China scientists saying that this is a, a coalition of international scientists sounding this alarm. And the report concludes that humans are fueling climate change. They say 
this determination is unequivocal. That was their word. It's overwhelming. Another one of the words they use. So it, no, maybe, no ifs, ands, or buts. Humans are responsible for this. They say that carbon dioxide is now at a level that we've not seen in 2 million years. The Arctic is collapsing. The oceans are becoming acidic. Th this is the most important thing that we need to conquer. If our world comes to an end, nobody's going to care about anything else. So this is number one, the number one thing that we need to focus on. Scientists say that they don't know if this can be reversed, or if the best that we can hope for is just to stop and mitigate and slow this damage that's already been done. Now, here's the deal. For right-wingers out there who say, oh, I don't care about rising sea levels. I mean, you know, I'm not a coastal elite. Well, consider this. Climate catastrophes increase not just migration from state to state, but also immigration. And it increases our national security risk because when people don't have food because they can't grow crops, when people don't have water, when they don't have potable water, when they don't have their basic needs, when their homes are decimated by floods, guess where they're going to go? They're going to go to the next closest dry land. So all of those New York and California coastal elites that people on the right loathe, they could soon be coming to a middle America town near you, including not just Americans, but people from Mexico and South America. Everybody's all excited that we've got this bipartisan infrastructure bill that hands over control of public roadways and other structures to private companies that will then monetize them, that will then cost all of us money because we'll have to pay to use them, which we already paid for those things to begin with. But it also, this is the key, this is why I'm saying bipartisanship is horrific for our country and for our world. This bill would gift $25 billion, billion with a B, in our money, taxpayer money, to the very companies that are destroying the planet. According to the Center for International Environmental Law, the latest version of this infrastructure bill is filled with giveaways for the fossil fuel industry. What's more, they're masking these giveaways as climate solutions. So they're BSing us on top of it. A senior policy analyst at Food and Water Watch says that we already provide 15 billion in subsidies to fossil fuel companies. And we don't have any hope of ever meeting the Paris Climate Accord goals if we continue with these taxpayer funded handouts, basically we're propping them up. We're making them sustainable. And instead of just letting them die as we should, so the, co the country and the planet can live. So here's two things they're trying to pass off as climate solutions. One is carbon capture and the storage of carbon. The other is hydrogen fuel. So here's why I say they're BS, they're totally masking these giveaways with this BS. Scientists, experts say that hydrogen, which is made from natural gas, still produces carbon dioxide as a waste product. What's more, the process used to create hydrogen requires the burning of additional natural gas, which then produces more greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. In fact, there were new studies that were conducted by Stanford and Cornell universities, and they say that hydrogen actually produces more greenhouse gases than just using regular gas. So there's literally no benefit. The experts also point out that carbon capture, which they keep touting as this, oh, it's this miracle, it's going to help, we're going to capture the carbon, blah, blah, blah. They say it does nothing to ameliorate the effects of 
fracking or drilling or mining or the burning of fossil fuels. Um, there was a man named Mark Jacobson. He's a Stanford University professor of uh, civil and environmental engineering. He said, quote, any legislation funding carbon capture and storage or use or direct air capture is legalizing the funding of scam technologies that merely increase air pollution, death and illness, mining and its damage and fossil fuel infrastructure. And they have no provable carbon benefit. So not only does it not benefit the planet, not only does it not work, it also gives them the veneer, the look of doing something good for the planet, and it keeps them profitable. It keeps them going. So rather than providing subsidies in this infrastructure bill to companies and projects that offer true hope of stemming climate change with renewable energy sources, like solar, like wind, once again, they're pretending to care about climate change. They pretend that they give a damn about climate change, but then they gift their big oil and big gas donors billions of dollars. When, when at the same time, when we ask for something, it's, oh, no, we can't afford it. Oh, how are you going to pay for that? Oh, health insurance for everyone? No, we can't afford that. Oh, no, that can't be done like every other industrialized country on the planet. No, we can't do that. We can't afford it. But we can give $25 billion to the big gas and oil industries. Yeah, that they have the money for. And, and like I said, at the same time, these oil and gas companies get to pretend that they care about the environment. So it gives cover to everybody. The lawmakers get to pretend that they care. Oil and gas gets to look like the heroes, like they're doing something to stop climate change and to get rid of their own pollution. And to be clear, this bogus clean energy giveaway, this wasn't inserted into the bill by the mean old Republicans. This was drafted as I said in the beginning, by a bipartisan group of both Republicans and Democrats. So the lesson in all of this is anytime you see that Congress is working in a bipartisan manner, just know 99% of the time, that means that the establishment donors gave them the green light. They said, oh, okay, yeah, we're good with that because they're about to come into some cash. They're about to either directly make money like these giveaways at our expense, or they're going to see changes that will make them more money, like the dismantling of regulations or other laws that are keeping them from making, you know, another billion because they're so hard up. So the last hope that we have for true infrastructure change and something that's going to actually help with climate change is if progressives in the House say no, if they stand up to this, if they have the ovaries to stand up to the establishment once and for all and refuse to sign this infrastructure bill unless, number one, it removes things like this giveaway, or number two, if the reconciliation bill that they're trying to push for after this bill goes through, which won't require a majority, if that gets passed in the Senate, which is what Bernie Sanders has said, he said that once this bill moves from the original bill moves from the Senate to the House, the House will not make a move on it until they have a guarantee that the other reconciliation part a second bill is going to be put through. So if they hold out and they can get a lot of what we need in that reconciliation bill and they get the guarantee and it passes through the Senate first, we might have some hope. If not, guys, just know all of Biden's talk about wanting to fix climate change, 
you know, all of him is rolling back of so many of the Trump era uh, deregulation and, and harm that he was doing. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make a bit of difference. It's like a drop in the ocean. And his talk about, you know, being the 2021 FDR, if they don't make this happen, it's all lip service. It means nothing. And, and understand there are things that we all can do more than cars, planes, everything that uses fuel. The one thing you can do today to change all of this is to start eating a plant-based diet. The methane released from factory farms, primarily from cattle, is huge. It, it literally, at least several years back when I wrote my book, it far exceeded the amount of greenhouse gases produced than all modes of transportation currently in use. That's how important it is. And the amount of water that's used in factory farming, it's unbelievable. The amount of damage we're doing with these feces pits, which I've talked about before, of all of the waste coming from the animals that they pump into these large pits that then very often fail and get into the water and our land and damages the ocean even further, damages our waterways our rivers, our lakes, and so forth. We each can do this. And we, we vote every day with our fork. We tell companies what we want and what we don't want. So even more so than going out and getting yourself an electric vehicle, which is great, which helps a little bit, is what you put on your plate every day. So if you guys want to make a difference, if this matters to you, if it scares the hell out of you like it scares me, here's your answer. This is what you can do today to try to help until our government gets their shit together, until they figure out that, oh, yeah, you know, we might want our children and our grandchildren to actually have a future and have somewhere to live. Anyway, guys, this is monumental. I will absolutely let you know if I hear more. Until then, take care. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I'll talk with you soon.